Hello everybody, it's DJ here with another Monday Motivation. I hope your week has started out great. Well, last week I talked about doing the hard things. This week, I thought I would build upon that and talk about being consistent. Now, consistency in our faith is something that really builds a foundation for us that will give us a, a lot of growth in our spiritual life and actually help us through life. So it's incredibly important I mean, I would sit there and say that the strength of our faith is even developed and determined by our daily rituals. So you may be asking, what areas do we need to be consistent in in order to build this foundation of growth? I have five areas that I think will be really impactful for you. If you will be consistent in these, they will grow and build that foundation of growth in your life. The first one is incredibly important to me, and that is prayer. Be consistent in your prayer. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, Paul tells the Thessalonians to pray without ceasing. You see, a consistent prayer life keeps us in a strong connection with God. When we are faced with different struggles and different challenges, whether they're great or small, that prayer life and, and having that relationship with God and getting into the habit of talking to him is incredibly important. So, you know, throughout the day, make it a habit to, to have, talk to God about the things that are happening. I know for me that it's waking up first thing in the morning. I get to the office early. I have a uh, app on my phone that keep track of everybody that has requested prayers. And I go through that prayer and it is one of those things that is a special time for me to connect with God uh, in a special way and to, to see him answer those prayers. Sometimes they're answered in the ways I want, sometimes they're not, but I've always seen God at work. A lot of people sit back and think that you have to have this long winded prayer or you have to be able to wax eloquent, poetic way of doing prayers or you have to have a prayer memorized. That's not a prayer life that you have to have. What you really need is just to simply talk to God. Tell him about what all you have going on. Tell him about the struggles that you have and, and tell him and praise him for the good things that are happening in your life. Ask for things that he can help you with or that he can help other people in your life with that are going through challenges maybe. And celebrate and be grateful for those things that he has done for you. And having that, that dedicated time each day for that, whether it's in the early morning or maybe it's before you go to bed at night, I pray outside of that early morning time. I pray uh, if I'm about to go into a meeting that I think is going to be challenging or if I'm facing something in my life that is uh, just seems like an uphill battle, I pray to God. When I put my head on the pillow, I try to remember that God has gotten me through the day or... I continue to ask for help in, in the struggles that I have in life and asking God to help me. I'm always praying to God. And sometimes they're real quick prayers, uh, one or two sentences. And sometimes I may have a very long because I'm going through my prayer list. It may be a very long one. So find time throughout your day, whatever works for you and gives you the opportunity to have a clear mind that you can really focus on what you're praying for and make that time to talk with God. Number two reading God's word. As much as prayer is communicating with God, reading God's word is also communicating with God because this is God talking to you. This is God sitting there saying that here is, here is my will for your life. In Joshua 1, 8, it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night. Understanding that reading God's word aligns our hearts to God's is so impactful in our lives. If you want to be more consistent in your Bible reading, get an app and start reading the Bible through. Make it a goal to read the Bible all the way through. I've been doing this for years now. I read the Bible all the way through. I read it by listening to it. I have the Bible on audio. I usually listen to it as I'm going to work. That can pose a little bit of a challenge because if I've got other things going on or for if I literally see a squirrel or an animal cross my path, it distracts me a little bit. So that may not be the best thing for you if you're easily distracted. And I'm sitting there as I'm driving, I'm able to sit there and listen to that Bible read to me. And I can picture the scenes or I can take in how this might impact my life for the day. 
or that season of life that I'm in. So making time, though, to read the word every single day, it will make an impact on your life. Number three is making sure that you are fellowshipping with other believers. In Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25, it says, And let us consider how we may spur one another to, on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together. So when we consistently show up with our brothers and sisters to worship, to pray, to sing praises to God, to fellowship with them, to rejoice when there's something wonderful that's happened in somebody's life, to pray around them and for them when something challenging is going on in their lives, that is to be family. That's to be the family of God. And so many people miss out on that. I see people who show up only every now and then, they miss out on the opportunity to be around, not just not just in the family of God, but be around it, to develop relationships, to be around people who can hold you accountable, who can encourage you. And, and I, I hear people sit back and say things like, well, the church is filled with a bunch of hypocrites and I don't want to be around a bunch of hypocrites. They're not hypocrites. They're imperfect people. Guess what? Just like you, they're imperfect who are serving a perfect God. You could be a help to somebody who is struggling with their imperfections and they can help you with your imperfections. That's what it means to be in the family of God, to be able to fit together like puzzle pieces to complete this beautiful picture of what it is to be in God's family. So fourth, I think practicing this attitude of gratitude, it is so important. In Psalms 100 verse 4, the psalmist writes, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. When you develop this habit of gratitude and, and even couple that with worship, uh, you end up with this shift in the focus on God's goodness and his holiness and his sacredness that we've talked about before. And that serves to strengthen our faith. We recognize who we are serving and we recognize all the goodness that he's done in our life. When you have this attitude of gratitude, you will keep your eyes open and your ears open to all the blessings that God has given you to. I remember a counselor who specialized in grief counseling, and he specifically talked about his mom, and his mom was just in a state of depression over the loss of his dad. She just thought everything in her life was going wrong and just thought everything was horrible. What he had her do was to list all those things that she said were bad in her life, and then he ask her to go around and then to write down all of the good things in life. And she said, there is no good things in life, but he, he eventually got her to do it. And what she found out was that that list of all the good things in life got bigger. Not only did it get bigger, but her mindset changed. She started seeing all the goodness that God had around her. And that really helped bring her out of that state of depression. So I would sit there and tell you that having an attitude of gratitude keeps you grounded and keeps you so fulfilled in knowing that God is around you and that God is working for you and God is blessing you and making you a fortunate person because you are a person of faith. And then finally, we need to be consistent in serving other people. In Galatians 5.13, Paul tells the Galatians, serve one another humbly in love. When you have consistent acts of kindness, it doesn't even need to be with people that are just like-minded believers or people you go to church with. When you do it with strangers, when you show kindness, even little ones, you don't have to be anything grandiose, but when you show up and you show up with genuineness and authenticity, you are going to see your faith grow. Helping other people is such a fulfilling and rewarding part of life. That will bring so much joy in your life. And it will help us to live out our faith in more tangible ways. And when you can do that, your faith will grow. Your spiritual life will grow. It brings us closer to God. It's not just about helping other people. That, I mean, that's, that's certainly what we need to do, but it brings us closer to God too. Find a way to serve, whether you're volunteering at, a, at an organization, whether you're doing something in the body of Christ, or you're just doing something simple to a stranger that you meet in a department store or uh, just on the street. Doing those acts of kindness are incredibly important to grow in our faith. We've covered five areas to be consistent. Be consistent in your prayer life. Be consistent in reading of God's word. Be consistent in fellowshipping with other believers. 
be consistent in practicing that attitude of gratitude, especially as it is in worship, and be consistent in showing up to serve other people. When you do those five things, your spiritual life will grow. Your faith will grow. If you want that resilience that comes from being a person of faith, if you want a deeper relationship with God, if you want to have faith that strengthens over time and becomes this really those spiritual muscles get super strong to help you weather the storms of life, whether they're massive hurricane tornadoes type storms in your spiritual life, or if it's just simple little challenges that you may face from time to time, showing up consistently in your faith will produce a foundation of growth that will blow your mind. I promise you, you gotta, you gotta be authentic and genuine with it though. And you want to make sure that you are consistent in all of these areas. So practice that this week, would you? And as, as I consistently say every Monday morning, remember God loves you and I do too. Bye.